Welcome to Living the New Life with Valentine Okeke. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This afternoon we are going to talk about the fruit of peace. I think like no other time we need peace. Peace is a fruit. It is not a feeling. I think it's important for we to draw that distinction. That peace is a fruit whose functions are vital for anyone desiring to live in the fullness of the Spirit of God. That means if you desire to live in the fullness of the Spirit of God, you must cultivate and develop the fruit of peace. Peace must be developed by an act of the will and true practice. There is no other way. It must be by an act of the will and true practice that we can develop the fruit of peace. Let's quickly go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24. I'll begin to read from verse 1. He says that as Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings. But he told them, do you see all these buildings? I assure you they will be so completely demolished that not one stone will be left on top of another. That's a shocking prediction. Verse 3. Later, Jesus sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives. His disciples now came to him privately and asked him, When will all this take place? He had already predicted what will happen to the temple. And if you recall, that temple was the beauty of their time. And here was Christ telling them that a day is coming when this temple will be completely destroyed. They now came to him privately and said, When will all this take place? And will there be any sign ahead of time to signal your return and the end of the world? What a big question. You see their concern. Because they knew that something significant was about to happen. They wanted to be sure, since they were dealing with the master, the creator himself. They said, when will these things happen? Is there any way we can know? Jesus answering them in verse 4. Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah. They will lead many astray, and wars will break out near and far. But don't panic. Tell your neighbor, don't panic. One of the signs of the end time is that war will break out near and far. But one translation says, let your heart not be troubled. Yes, these things must come, but the end wouldn't follow immediately. The nations and kingdoms will proclaim war against each other. And there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this will be only the beginning of the horrors to come. There will be earthquake. Are we experiencing that now? The answer is yes. There are famines, pestilence all over the place. Then he said, then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. Are they killing Christians in the land? The answer is yes. You will be hated all over the world because of your allegiance to me. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will lead many people astray. Sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. But those who endure to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world. So that all nations will hear it. And then finally, the end will come. I'm not talking about rapture now. I'm simply talking about the peace of God. God is simply telling us that a time will come when we'll see things and hear things that will trouble our hearts. But that the only thing that will preserve us is his peace. And I have said that this peace is a fruit that we must cultivate and develop. It's not a feeling. What are the functions of the fruit of peace? Because we need to know the functions of it. Because when you know the function of something, then 
you will be able to make up your mind whether it's important or not. From the passage that I've just read, you can see that there are certain things that will happen in this planet Earth that prayer and fasting and confessing will not wish away. Those things are bound to happen, whether we like it or not. But what Christ is saying is that those that are called by his name, if you are prepared and do the needful, then you will be preserved. The first function of the fruit of peace is to prevent the hearts of God's people from being troubled. One translation says, don't panic. The first function of the fruit of peace is to prevent the hearts of God's people from panicking. Why will your heart want to panic? Because you will see some things that will come upon the earth that, like I said, we cannot pray fast or confess it away. Just like Jesus explained in Matthew chapter 24 verse 6. Let's look at that verse 6 again. He says, And wars will break out near and far, but don't panic. Yes, these things must come, but the end wouldn't follow immediately. You see it? Whether we like it or not, war will break out. I heard our president talking that he's having sleepless night because of what is happening in Libya. The security challenges that the trouble in Libya is breeding for Africa. These things must come. If you go to Luke chapter 21, verse 10, Luke shed more light on these things. We'll read verse 10 and 11. Then he added, nations and kingdoms will proclaim war against each other. There will be great earthquake, and there will be famines and epidemics in many lands. And there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs in the heavens. Do we have any epidemic? We have the coronavirus in China. I read, I don't know how true that was, that they are planning, asking for permission to kill everyone that tests positive of the virus so that they can sacrifice them in order to save the whole nation. If the highest court in their land approves that, that means that there will be weeping and wailing. Because what it means is that once they confirm that you have that virus, you are gone. But there are other reports indicating that um, once you have the virus, you are good as dead. It's like they are already eliminating the people with the virus. But I don't know how true that story is. Jesus Christ had explained that these things will happen and that there is nothing anybody can do about it except to follow his counsel. These things will be so fearful that they will have the potential of literally frightening people to death. If you notice many people are having BP now, you hear of people slumping and dying, heart attacks. It's all because of the things that are happening. And Luke also spoke about it in Luke chapter 21, verse 26. It says that the courage of many people will flutter because of the fearful fate that they see coming upon the earth. Because of the stability of the very heaven will be broken up. Can we read that again? That the courage of many people will flutter because of the fearful fate that they see coming upon the earth. Because the stability of the very heavens will be broken up. Is it happening now? You notice that there are a lot of fear producing events of violence occurring daily throughout the world, especially in our land. These days, nobody talks about people being killed. They simply talk about the number. Uh, well, few people were killed, few. And you ask them few, they said 30, 20. They call it few. So you can imagine, not until they begin to slaughter people in their thousands before the government will begin to do something. People are beginning to Notice things, the increase of death and destruction in our land. And believers are afraid like non-believers. But guess what? Jesus Christ gave his followers only one commandment concerning these things that will begin to start happening in the earth. And that commandment is in Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. It says, See that you be not troubled. Let your heart not be troubled. That word let is a command. It's not a suggestion. It is the responsibility of every individual, every individual believer, to make sure that your heart is not troubled. 
and the only way your heart will not be troubled is by cultivating the fruit of peace. We believers must take the initiative and the individual responsibility of cultivating the fruit of peace in our own hearts. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is not going to do that for us. The presence of peace is the only thing that will keep trouble out of our hearts. If you go to John chapter 14 verse 27, it says, I'm leaving you with a gift. I'm leaving you with what? With a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't like the peace the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. Another translation says, don't panic. But there is no way you will not panic seeing all the things that are happening. The only way you will not panic is if you have cultivated that fruit of peace in your heart. The things that are happening around us, they are making so much noise that even when God is speaking in his gentle, still, small voice, we can't hear him because the troubles that we are going through, the sound that they are producing in our heart is so much that we can't even hear what the Lord is saying. It is very important before all these things begin to happen for us to be able to cultivate the fruit of peace in our individual lives. And for us to be able to do that, one of the first things that we need to do is to guard our hearts. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. We are still talking about the function of the fruit of peace. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. It says there, Don't turn your back on wisdom who protect you. Love her and she will guide you. Getting wisdom is the most important thing that you can do. And whatsoever that you get, get good judgment. Then in verse 23, it says that, above all else, guard or protect your heart, for it affects everything that you do. What affects every other thing that you do? And one of the things that you use to protect your heart is the fruit of peace. Because we said that the first function of the fruit of peace is to protect your heart. The most needful part of life is to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his word. That's why he says that wisdom is the principal thing. It is the most important thing. This will make the difference between a troubled believer with a believer who is at peace. If you remember the story of Martha and Mary, when Jesus visited them, Martha was so busy trying to prepare the big dinner that was to take place that night. But Mary, the sister, simply sat at the feet of Jesus, listening to the word of life. At a point, mother came to Jesus and said, Master, are you not worried that my sister is not helping me? Please instruct her to come and join me so that we can make a big deal out of what we are planning tonight. And Jesus Christ said, Martha, Martha, you bother yourself with a lot of things. Your sister Mary has chosen the best part of life, sitting under my feet to listen to what I have to say. And I'm not going to discourage her by asking her to leave this thing that she has chosen, to come and assist you to serve. In other words, the dinner was not the most important thing. But for you to be able to listen to the author of life itself is the most important thing. Number two, we are still talking about the function. You can read up that story in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, the story of Martha and Mary. What is simply teaching us is that we need to take out the time and make the effort to sit quietly and calmly at the feet of Jesus. Anytime you sit down under an anointed teaching, it helps you to build up your faith. And you remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we are told that the just must live by faith. That means we must live by the promises of God. And that's exactly what will make the difference in the time and season that we are living. The second function of the fruits of peace is to determine the direction in the life of an earnest believer. That's the second function. The fruit of peace will help you determine the direction that your life will go. Let's quickly go to Colossians chapter 3. Verse 15, anytime you see the word let, just know that it's a command. It's not a suggestion. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. It says there, and let the peace that comes from Christ, 
where does the peace come from? The Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 27, he said, I am leaving you with a special gift. I'm giving you my peace that will garrison your mind and your heart. Now, we are being told in this Colossians chapter 3 verse 15, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. To rule means to determine. It says, let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. It is the responsibility of the individual believer to let peace rule in his heart. Have you seen that again? It is our responsibility to let peace rule in our hearts. The peace of God will be a deciding factor in a believer's heart. It keeps you safe within the boundaries of God's will. That's the importance of peace. It keeps you safe within the boundaries of God's will. And that's why we are told that peace is an umpire. You know the work of an umpire. He is the one that decides the direction of the game. When the players step out of bound, the whistle will go. That is exactly what the peace of God does for us. That's why it's important that we cultivate and develop it. The umpire will always blow the whistle when a player steps out of bounds. God uses the fruit of peace to guide the steps of his children so that their lives will be in keeping with his perfect plan and purpose. In other words, the peace of God will act as an umpire. So we become sensitive to the leading of God's peace we will become better able to perceive the leading of his spirit. So we need to be sensitive. What it simply means is that if you are about to do anything and you begin to lose your peace, it's a guide for you to hold on. Because you notice something. Once that peace leaves, it's an indication that you're on the wrong side or that the timing is not right. It might be a, the right thing that you want to do, but that something is not right, it's not enough. Take for instance, if you want to relocate to some other city, there are three things that you need to decide. Number one is when, number two is where, number three is how. How am I going to get to this city? Our daughter had that issue. Very soon she will relocate to another city. And the issue of how she was going to relocate to that city came up. And they came up with their own idea. And the very moment they mentioned it, I lost my peace. I said, no way. I didn't even think twice. I just felt the peace of God lift. I said, cancel that idea. That how will not work. Is that okay? Once you have cultivated this fruit of the spirit of peace it begins to guide you it begins to direct you on how to deal with certain issues that's why it's very important because God will never leave you without a witness but you see too many times we are eager to want to hear the voice of God but one of the principal ways that God uses in guiding his children is through his peace but once you cultivate the habit of being sensitive to this particular fruit of the spirit hearing God speak becomes a secondary aspect because without his peace there is no way you can hear his voice why because too many times when you're in trouble the voice of that trouble is so loud that it ch chokes out the voice of God. But if you have cultivated fruit of peace, that peace becomes your assured guide. Are you getting it? That's why it's important that we cultivate this particular fruit. At the point that you give your life to Christ, that fruit is deposited in your heart. But it's left for you to nurture it and develop it by practicing. At times you might miss it. You think that God is leading you in a particular direction. You miss it. Don't get discouraged. Practice makes perfect as you continually practice using his peace as your guide. Before you know it, you get to the point that once something happens, that peace will lift. You know exactly, it's a check. Hey, hold on. That's what the peace does. Once it lifts, he said, check, hold on. The peace will help you, like the example that we are talking about. If you are moving to a, a new city, 
or you want to venture into a new business, whatever it is, if you have cultivated that fruit, it will help you determine three things. When, where, and how. When am I supposed to move? That's the timing. Then where am I going? That's the location. It might surprise you to learn this afternoon that the blessings of God, they are tied to two things. They are tied to location. They are tied to position. For God to bless you, he will move you to a particular place. Then he will get you to a particular position. And things will begin to happen. For him to bless Joseph, he had to move him to where? To Egypt. Forget about all the process that he went through. All the sufferings. All the troubles. But at the end of the day, for the blessings to flow, he had to get him to become the prime minister of Egypt. For him to bless Abraham, he told Abraham, you must leave your father's kindred and go to a land that I will show you. The blessings of God, they are tied to location and position. You might say, oh, what of David? He moved David from where he was attending to his father's ship in the field and brought him to the war front where he met with the challenge that Israel was going through and God gave him the opportunity to kill Goliath and from there, promotion came. He became the personal bodyguard of Saul. And you all know the story. The blessings of God, they are tied to location and position. That's why it is important that you cultivate the fruit of peace. Because it helps you to determine where, when, and how you handle whatever issues that confront you. Is that okay? But the fruit of peace is one means by which God desires to protect his children by keeping them within the boundaries of his divine protection. Then the third aspect of the function of the fruit of peace, the fruit of peace enables believers to be peacemakers. That one we are going to discuss that in details next week Sunday because it's a very important function that we cannot just gloss through. I said the fruit of peace enables a believer to be a peacemaker. But let me just give you a little bit of it. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, it says there that God blesses those who work for peace. For they will be called the children of God. One translation says that God blesses peacemakers. For they will be called the children of God. So when you're a peacemaker, it's one sign that you're a child of God. The two are very related. For you to be able to be identified as a child of God, you must be a peacemaker. But guess what? Can you truly give what you don't have? If you don't have peace in your heart, there is no way you can be a peacemaker. Rather, you will be a troublemaker. And remember that one of his names in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, that he is the Prince of Peace. That's one of his names, Prince of Peace. Why was he called the Prince of Peace? Because he is peace himself. Whatever is in the heart of a person will manifest in the way he treats others. So when you see people treating others shabbily, it's just because that's what they have in their heart. I don't know whether you heard about the story what happened between North Korea and uh, South Korea during the years when they were having their conflict. I learned that the Northern Korea people came, carried all kinds of trash and dumped it on the side of the, of the South. When they now reported the incident, their leader said, fine, package some goodies and co, fruits, very nice things, and go and put in the knot. His people said, no, why should we do that? When they had come to mess up our area, he said, yeah, people give what they have. <laughs> when you have peace in your heart, no matter the situation that you're facing, you approach it from the point of view of peace, not of war. When you see people being violent, it's because there is complete absence of peace in their lives. We're going to look at how to be a peacemaker. What I will do is to give you scriptures for you to go through so that 
by next week Sunday when we begin to discuss that because we will take time to do that because it's a very important function. We need peace in our homes, we need peace in our land, we need to be able to communicate peace to every situation that confronts us. And because many families and homes are rocking, we need to learn how to be a peacemaker so that we will be able to function in that calling that God had called us, the Ministry of Reconciliation. Is that okay? But guess what? God might not have called you into the fivefold ministry, but God had all called us into the Ministry of Peace. Did you see that this afternoon? Let's go back to Colossians before we continue. Because too many times we will say, Oh, I need to know the call of God in my life. The first thing that God had called every believer into is the ministry of reconciliation. The second thing that he had called every believer to is the ministry of peace. Tell your neighbor you have a call in your life. The call to function in the ministry of reconciliation and the ministry of peace. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. Is that in your Bible? You are called to live in peace. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 and 20. He said, For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. This is the wonderful message he has given us to tell others. Verse 20. We are Christ's ambassadors, and God is using us to speak to you. We urge you as though Christ himself we are here pleading with you be reconciled to God for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ let's just back up to verse 18 it's in verse 18 that I want to bring up it says there that all this newness of life is from God who brought us back to himself through what Christ did and God had given us the task of reconciling people to himself. Some translation said that God had called us into that ministry of reconciliation. God had given every believer the task of reconciling people to himself. Every believer has a call. Number one, to reconcile others to God. Number two, to minister peace. Let me give you the relevant scriptures that we are going to use next week Sunday. You read Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, then verses 44 to 45. Matthew chapter 27, verse 14, and verse 54. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. First Peter chapter 2, verse 20. In Romans chapter 12, verse 19 to 21. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 52. In Luke chapter 22, verse 51. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 42. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. And lastly, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Did you get all that? You can see this last function of peace, the fruit of peace, is so important. It has a lot of scriptural references, so we are going to take time to go through them and tie everything together. But in summary, what is simply telling us is that this particular fruit will enable us to be peacemakers. And I said you cannot give what you don't have. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. That's one aspect. The second aspect is that out of the abundance of the heart, we'll always act. Our actions are based on what we have in our heart. When you see people acting, just know that 
it is what they have that they are given. And all that God had blessed you with, where is a storehouse for all that God had given to you? All that God had blessed us with, they are all deposited in our heart. That's why Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 said that we must do what? Guard our heart with all diligence. Protect your heart because out of your heart are the issues of life. Can we all stand? Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. You can join us in worship every Sunday by 9 a.m. for World Feast. Venue is at the 7 Option Parks, Ladoke Akintola Boulevard, opposite Caribou Hotel, Gerki Abuja. God bless you.